reliability, safety, space and low running costs. If this looks like the list of must-have criteria for your next Super Mini, Toyota has the ideal candidate in its Yaris, possibly the ultimate quality low-hassle purchase in this sector. If sensible is your thing, the Yaris takes some beating. For a car launched as long ago as 2005, Toyota's second-generation Yaris is a surprisingly competitive contender in the modern super mini sector. Which is no accident, of course. The Japanese brand has never stopped trying to improve it, with a whole raft of enhancements mostly focused on the 1.3 litre petrol model that most customers choose. The result, when it comes to power, torque, efficiency and low running costs, is a set of figures able to embarrass more recently introduced rivals. Add this to existing Yaris attributes of practicality, build quality and reliability and you've a model that still stands comparison with the class best, which is just as well since this is a category of car upon which Toyota depends. The Mark II version isn't quite as cute as its predecessor, but it is bigger and more practical, which has proved appealing to British buyers wanting to seat a family of four or five and needing a car to swallow the results of the weekly supermarket shopping excursion. So, a one-size-fits-all solution to the problems of modern life, is it? Let's find out. Toyota's development emphasis on the 1.3-litre petrol variant in recent times reflects the fact that this is the version that most customers choose, so that's the one I'm driving here. Now, Toyota calls this a 1.33-litre engine in an attempt to emphasise the differences over the unit of similar size that we first saw in this Mark II Yaris. And there are quite a few. Uh, power hike from 87 to 100 brake horsepower, for example. And that's quite a lot for a car of this size. A 1.4-litre petrol Volkswagen Polo, for example, has just 85 brake horsepower, and a 1.4-litre Ford Fiesta can't match it either. So there's plenty of pulling power, 120 newton meters of torque through the now standard six-speed manual gearbox. Rest to 60 takes 11.7 seconds on the way to a top speed of 109 miles an hour. But typical Yaris buyers are not likely to be overly concerned about statistics of this kind, which is just as well for Toyota since this car provides a competent but hardly exhilarating drive. Still, it does just enough to satisfy its likely target audience with quick-witted, accurate electric power steering, a pliant ride and well-controlled body roll. All-round visibility is very good too, something you particularly appreciate in the kind of urban driving especially suited to the entry-level 69 brake horsepower 1 litre petrol model. The 90 brake horsepower 1.4 litre D4D diesel works here too. Uh, it works particularly well around town and for urban dwellers uh, there's the option also of a six-speed multi-mode semi-automatic transmission. Initial impressions when this Mark II Yaris first arrived were that Toyota had taken the original and connected it up to a garage forecourt airline. The car being bigger in every dimension and markedly more bulbous. Now that was then. Today, with all Super Minis having taken much the same path, this Yaris isn't markedly large by small car standards. In fact, it's shorter than some of its rivals. Uh, that's mainly because they've had to comply with uh, pedestrian impact legislation, which normally adds a few centimetres onto the nose. Now, not here. The Yaris gets around that one by arcing its bonnet over the unyielding mechanicals, providing a deformable surface which means that it can be shorter while still providing very competitive interior space and being easy to park. Clever. Aesthetically, the look of this second generation version hasn't changed much in its time on the market, although a few detail improvements have been made. Uh, restyled rear light clusters, for example. At the wheel, there's been a return to conventional instrument dials after the original digital clusters were deemed a little Buck Rogers for conservative Yaris customers. Uh, at the wheel, uh, the forward MPV-like placement of the windscreen makes the driving position feel a little more commanding than in some other small cars. And the steering wheel adjusts now for reach as well as height, and all-round visibility is very good. 
The cabin itself has plenty of stowage space, 18 litres in all. And though unremarkable in terms of style and plastics quality, is beautifully screwed together. The double sealed doors, for example, are shut with a thunk rather than a clang. You can see why this car continues to do so well in customer satisfaction surveys. In the back, there's comfortable room for two adults, but as usual in this class of car, three would be a bit of a squash. At least there's no issue with headroom in this generation Yaris, uh, roof height having risen by 30 millimeters over the old version, and really tall passengers can even recline their backrest by up to 10 degrees for um, simple ease of access or more comfort on longer journeys. You can even use it just to send the kids to sleep. Now, the seat itself is split 60-40, and both parts of the seat can uh, go backwards and forwards individually by up to 150 millimeters to prioritize either legroom or rear boot space. Luggage-wise, there's 257 liters of space with all the seats in place, and there's more room under the boot floor. If you need more, just fold forward the easy flat rear seats, and you've got one of the larger uh, luggage bays of any modern super mini with 696 litres in total. Prices lie mainly in the 10.5 to 14.5,000 pound bracket and you'll need to allow an extra 500 pounds on top of whichever model you're considering if you want five doors rather than three. The 1.33 litre petrol version that I've been trying here starts at around £12,000 and you'll need £1,000 on top of that if you want the 1.4 litre D4D diesel variant. Uh, what about rivals? Well, the usual super mini suspects basically. Uh, cars like the Vauxhall Corsa, the Ford Fiesta, Renault Clio, Volkswagen Polo and Peugeot 207. Uh, now, a Yaris might cost you a few hundred pounds more than a comparable Corsa, but that's money you'll make up with better residual values at resale time. And against the Ford Fiesta, as far as list prices are concerned anyway, you'll, uh, you'll save up to around £1,300 over uh, a 1.25 or 1.4 litre petrol Fiesta. That's compared to a comparable 1, 1 litre and 1.33 litre Yaris's. So it's decent value. The diesel version is priced comparably to a Fiesta. Whether you choose your Yaris with 69 brake horsepower, one litre petrol power, this 100 brake horsepower, 1.33 petrol unit, or a 90 brake horsepower, 1.4 litre D4D diesel, you should find it to be pretty well equipped. All models come with remote central locking, the uh, clever sliding rear seat arrangement, power steering, a CD stereo with steering wheel controls and an AUX input, and also electric front windows. Many of the models that you'd be looking at will also have 15-inch alloy wheels, integrated front fog lamps, and a leather trim steering wheel. Safety-wise, as well as twin front airbags, most variants also get driver's knee, side, and curtain airbags, anti-lock brakes with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist to make them more effective, and, well, there's the option of stability control. If you want automatic transmission, in this case a six-speed multi-mode unit, then you'll need either the diesel or the 1.33. Even more than most super minis, thanks to Toyota's optimal drive technologies, there's little chance of a Yaris slashing and burning the contents of your bank account. Every model in the Yaris range delivers sub 120 grams per kilometre of CO2 readings and uh, this 1.3 litre uh, petrol variant really demonstrates just how far the brand has come in this respect with its stop and start uh, technology that cuts the engine in jams or in city traffic to save you fuel. Now um, despite delivering more power and torque than leading rivals this 1.33 engine uh, manages 55.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and delivers 120 grams per kilometer of CO2. So you'll get between uh, five and seven uh, more miles out of every gallon than you would in a comparable 1.4 litre Volkswagen Polo or Ford Fiesta or indeed a 1.2 litre Vauxhall Corsa. And all of those deliver CO2 readings of between 133 and 139 grams per kilometre. So they'll cost you more in tax. 
The other Yaris engines give a good account of themselves in this respect as well. Uh, with the 1.4 litre diesel returning 68.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 109 grams per kilometre of CO2, while the 1 litre petrol manages 56.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 118 grams per kilometre of CO2. Uh, insurance uh, groupings range between 1 and 4 and residual values remain strong for the class. While other, more avant-garde superminis have been grabbing the headlines, the Yaris has been quietly getting even better at doing what it does best, delivering low running costs and a satisfying ownership experience. Now there are better superminis in this sector to drive, some of the more premium feel too, but none of these are more reliable or better screwed together. More surprisingly, few are more affordable or better value. So if all this sounds like your ideal supermini in a nutshell, you'll know what to do.